Hello and welcome back after six months. Uh, this is uh, the Talking Script Podcast. I'm your host, John, better known as Daron Yaks Bentley. Fantastic show for you. Uh, next Living Story is uh, due to drop this next Tuesday. Uh, updates to some previously discussed things that we've kind of missed. And uh, we play catch up with some other topics. And, you know. Some other stuff. Who knows? But first, let me introduce you to my fellow hosts. He is a moderator over at MMO Champion and streams every Wednesday on this very channel. While we have no clue what to truly expect to, uh, uh, from the newly announced expansion, we may get some crazy stuff like Elite Specs, maybe a Cowboy Ninja Viking. Say hello to Jim. Ow. <laughs> Hi everybody. Uh no no cowboys, no ninjas, no vikings. Please and thank oh, you. No, one of those might be a possibility out of 3 out of 3. Eh. We'll have to discuss it. But oh. he streams over on Twitch where he answers the age old question with a new expansion announced. I guess the obvious question is where will we go? And also, how can we make delete thief a feature? Say hello <laughs> to age. You're muted. You're muted, buddy. We are. We deleted one thief. Come on, we can do it. Uh, we can do it. After after six months, I I was so offended that I didn't key in. I. I oh, yeah, you set that up oh. perfectly. Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> and she writes and streams for MMORPG.com. It's been so long. It's time to see if that roar is rusty. Say hello to Robin. I don't think you pushed in either. Oh, I shouldn't have to. Uh, oh, then you were too far away from your mic for it to pick up. Ah. Uh, now I think you were was... a little too close that you kind of blew out the mic and it was kind of <laughs> choppy. So, so yes, the roar is rusty. Yes. My God. All right. Well, let us jump uh, into it. Like we said, we've kind of been gone for about six months. Uh, so... We will be probably hitting uh, some topics that have been probably addressed to death on some things, but deal with us so we can just get people caught up, get ourselves caught up, I guess. But uh, the first thing we do want to talk about is something, you know, recent. It's the Next Living Story update, No Quarter. It is uh, actually set to release this coming Tuesday, May 26th. Uh, we do have the trailer here for you playing. Uh and uh, as you see in the trailer, it talks about the new map, which will be Drizzlewood Coast, uh, new masteries, well, new mastery in full, which is the United Legion's way station synchronization, uh, and also an expansion to the essence manipulation. Uh, also, we're going to see a new strike mission and new rewards in, in the form of weapon sets, uh, not a full set of armor, but. A, it says a four-piece armor set, which we'll talk more about, and a new emote, and they also said much more, so. Yay! But, um, you know, we can dive, we can, we can dive deep into what little bits we, they've talked about, like, as you're seeing here, they say the new map is going to be a map, have a map-wide meta event. I, my question is, do you guys think that's good? I mean, we've kind of always talked about they needed to find a balance between you know what we had in Heart of Thorns and POF, so I, th you know, how do you feel they are? Do you think we need a map wide map think, event? Yeah, because it's what people come back for. I don't. I think the problem with Heart of Thorns is that every single map was that. Yeah. Um, for maps, so I think people will be okay with it. I, I think Bureau Marches did a good job, but it was more like go do random stuff and then go do the map meta. Right. Yeah. So I think I, if we're, if this is definitely one of those things where it's just the constant push of progression, kind of like Verdant Brink was where, you know, you're pushing to take or dragon sand, maybe. Yeah. Like silver wasty or dragon sand similar. Um, yeah, I think the map wide dragon meta fall event, really. we know the descriptions like you work, uh, with, you know, uh, well, you work with some of the people to push things. It, I, it almost made me feel like when I read the description, like I was like, is this like a second attempt at like what they wanted or to be? It feels like where it was supposed to be like, right. A 
battle right. back and forth. So I'm kind of curious. Well, there was a point in time, I can't remember if it was in the article that, that had the trailer in it or if it's during the trailer, but it looks like there are zones in the map that are highlighted. Oh, yeah, when yeah, they show the... Up. Yep. So I feel like they're kind of trying to bring a little bit of dub v dub into yeah, PvE it's playing here. right now for people. Yeah, yeah, there it is. that yeah, that would be cool because like it could help bring people who are more interested in world versus world into PvP and experience some of that side of things, and then perhaps get people who are not experienced with uh, world versus world get them a little taste of it, you know? Yeah, but or the I concepts anyway. And, and I'm looking forward to like is age strobing for anybody else? Yeah, I'll say your camera started flicking. Yeah, it stopped but, uh, now. Yeah, uh, but um, I, and as for like just just seeing the stuff that's here, like there's a crap ton of rewards coming out of this. Yeah, yeah, two weapon sets I think I saw right. Yeah, uh, Echo. Uh, was it? Tengu Echo weapon set and also Stormcaller weapon set, I think. Um, and we do have some of these screenshots from the uh, page that they were showing off to, which kind of goes in to see more of the terrain and stuff like that. Oh, chat yeah. saying they love the uh, Ice Golem elbow drop. I think that, that looked like that was from what's going to be the uh, new strike mission, which... Yeah, I'm all for that. I I, I definitely mm -hmm. maybe want to see if we can get people in and try it out. I might yeah, have, we'll to have to get elbow dropped by an ice golem. <laughs> the the one thing that I'm super interested in is it looks like it's a PV horde kind of strike mission, which I absolutely love that kind of gameplay. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Guild Wars Two is uh, very on brand age. Good job, <laughs> the mug. Uh, but yeah, I. I feel like Guild Wars 2 is really suited to that. So right. having to fight off wave after wave of enemy, just that seems really cool to me. And, uh, uh, well, I mean, they didn't really say too much about the new mastery, the United Legion's way station uh, synchronization. It's basically, they just said you could use a special action skill to aid you in the battle. And I think in the video they showed, like, they could throw, like, bombs and stuff like that. And uh, so... I'm curious to see what that is. Are you are you guys glad that they're expanding on the essence manipulation as like yes. The... Well, because yeah. what the the thing they said that the expansion here is to be able to use the um the essence attacks on any target. Yeah, if you yeah. you can use it on any target, but if it is one of the same or if it if it is supposed to if it's the rock it, paper it does scissors more damage and yeah and it will do it to other enemies as well around. Right. I feel like it would have been really sad to have that mastery be not used at all in this map. Like after spending so much time unlocking them and like getting used to using them and stuff, it would have just been like, okay. Disappointing. Yeah. Yep. I'm kind of hoping that the, the way station mastery is going to be something similar to like the, um, the priory detection device and Thunderhead keep for that heart where you pick it up and it's a special action key that becomes a weapon bar swap. Okay. Like, I feel like that would be a really good idea for it. And then, you know, they'd actually let you level up the mastery and get one, two, three, four, five as different right. abilities for it. And, but, and I mean, like we said, the strike mission, it does with their description, it does definitely sound like it has some kind of like horde mode element to it. Cause it says survive an onslaught from waves of forces. And then there's a battle at the end. So, could be yep. interesting uh rewards i know you talked about the two new weapon sets but for me and i think for a lot of people <laughs> the four piece armor set which is you, you'll probably see in one of the screens that are coming by but uh it is the ceremonial garb uh of the norn bear shamans out uh, right there actually uh -huh. we've been waiting so long since it's been like shown in like cultural armor from like launch like i'm so glad that they're finally putting one of them in yeah that's cool that's no no that's amazing don't don't underplay <laughs> it no. so so what you're saying deo is is you will gladly join on a regular weekly basis to farm for this i mean it really depends <laughs> on what it is if it's like 
solo the strike mission, then I'll be like, well, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, which would be fitting for a Norn. But. Yeah. But then so it would be fair because only Norns would be able to get it. So you'd take your strike mission and to, to get it, and it would just be you and like another Norn player. So that's your raid team for the strike mission. Yeah, exactly. You have um, to take a Norn in. Dale, do you have any thoughts about like people from other races wearing the bear ceremonial garb? That will that will be weird out of all of them, but I guess it's also along the same lines as um what well, was it the uh the pre episode or whatever that had like the a lot of the char outfit stuff because that was mm-hmm. able to be equipped so I mean it, it's a little bit of a sting but I, for me if if I can if it's so I can get it now all right. But <laughs> you accept it. Yeah. But I mean, I could easily see I'll always have seen this as one of those cultural pieces from the core or the uh, the base game that, you know, only was for each uh, race. Right. Is there some Abaddon rewards where we don't that we don't know about? I mean, we can only hope so. <laughs> it's a secret to everybody. In the end, isn't technically everything that we get somehow trickle back to Abaddon? I like to think so. Deo, short show. Oh. <laughs> um, also, they said that there was going to be a new e- emote to, to obtain. And I think when we were going over this, we, we were actually surprised. I think Age even noticed, was the one that noticed it, I believe, that every every update uh, or every release, didn't we get an, an emote? Which I was like, oh, yep. yeah, we did. And I noticed on the trailer that they said that the emo is play dead. Yeah, and then they show it when the, the mortar shell hits and then mm-hmm. all the... Yeah. Yep. Because what? It was rock on for the prologue. Um, Shiver is for... I think that was the most the recent one. Recent one, yeah. For part two of Bjorn Marches with Drakkar. Can I say I'm so thrown off because we got that... Uh, the Yeah prologue or what or the i can't even remember which season we're on like i have to seriously sit and think about it because like for some reason i keep thinking we're in the fourth season but actually we're in the fifth season we're technically season. in season five yes we're yeah. in the we're not in a season we're in the first saga the ice yeah, yeah. Saga. it's still a season <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna say i i guess the big question is because we did find out i want to say earlier in this month that they did let people know that there wasn't going to be any voice acted dialogue, at least at first. Like it's not like right. just, but in order to be able to release it, uh, they had to just be due to, I think what everybody's aware of the, the quarantine that happened. Uh, it's still happening yes. up there, I think. And in California. But, yep. um, so they're going to go back later and put it in for everyone. But I guess my question is, uh, are you, are you guys, is is there any part of you that maybe wants to hold off on it or, or are there people out there that might just hold off and be like, I want to play it in its full intended form or. Uh, for me, it's more of a question of how long the wait it will be, which we have no idea um, because, you know, Voice act, voiceover is fairly an involved process, so it's not like something you can just stuff in usually. Um, even if like tomorrow they could get everybody in the studio to record or whatever. Um, so yeah, I I would think about waiting, but I I want to experience the story and like who knows how long it will be before they can uh, get people in there to do stuff. Mm-hmm. And like Chad says, there's, you know, some people in chat are holding off on it. And I, you know, part of me, you know, I was like, you know, I'd like to, I mean, since we started doing a show again, be kind of hard. I'd be like, okay, guys, you guys talk about spoilers while I just. Nah. <laughs> so. I mean, I'm probably going to play it, but I will replay it when oh, it right. comes out with yeah. the voice yeah. acting. Um, I also just noticed something watching it. I find it funny that, uh, the new map I, we were talking about introducing a bit of dub v dub into it and it looks a heck of a lot like the alpine borderlands oh yeah <laughs> so maybe that's where the mist got it from 
<laughs> oh, are we finally yeah. getting World Reward lore? No. <laughs> um, but I think I think it's okay that they release it because like if you want to play it right away, you can. If you don't, you have it unlocked anyway. And when they put in the VO, you'll you can just play it after. It's yeah, definitely. I mean, I I feel like if there are, I you know I don't remember if there were people that complained. It's like oh you're still gonna release it and it's not finished, you know type thing. But like we said, it it's very rare circumstances. You know this whole quarantine thing. It's like, but it, and I, that's why I was just curious if there were like you know people in chat and like how I was like internally debating at some point where I was like, yeah, part of me would want to experience it with hearing the voices and stuff at the same time, but. You know, I can understand both sides of it. So definitely curious yeah, to well, see who will play it and who will maybe hold off. Even with this trailer in the beginning where they're doing the um, the little council thing, it was weird to see the characters talking and stuff and not hear anything. Like, it just got so used to that. And I'm sure it'll be fine in story, but it is going to be a little odd not having that and being like, oh, God, I got to pay attention to this chat bubble or whatever you know mm-hmm. yep but yeah so you know this will be dropping on the 26th like we said there's no scheduled date for when the voice acting uh dialogue will be able to be put in since we don't know when they you know things could open up for that but um overall are you guys excited for episode three yep those Tengu yeah. weapons specifically, like that great sword that you see off on the left hand side right after they call that out, that great sword looks really cool. Yeah. And and all of the all of the cosmetic rewards look really freaking cool. So I I actually had Tengu weapons in in Guild Wars One, so I'm actually pretty excited to get them here. Oh, so they're based off of a Guild Wars One skin. Yeah, but these are probably like a different look, uh, like a reinventing of them. Okay. And the Stormcaller weapons, are, I assume they're based off Stormcaller back in Guild Wars 1. Uh, uh, basically, that's the horn that they sound for the very beginning. Uh, okay. You, you can hear, you can see more about it. Uh, there's actually a monument in the uh, Black Citadel, which is kind of in- interesting if you played Guild Wars 1 since you always had it from the human perspective to see basically the enemy's perspective during that time. Cause it's worded as like, they try to take us out type thing instead of like, it, it, it's definitely an interesting take like that you could probably see nowadays, you know, depending on who writes the history book type thing. So, but yeah, it's kind of cool that they're paying homage to that. I wonder if there'll be actually stuff involved with it, but you know, let, I mean, any final thoughts on the next living story? No quarter? I'm excited. Looking forward to it. Well, I mean, this was talked about. What's that? I'm going to voice all the things that I can't hear. (laughs) I was like, this was kind of talked about, I think it was back in March, uh, very briefly, but um, it seems like they talked about the neck well they talked about talking about the expansion like they're just think they're just it's early on there's nothing much to do about it but it was actually in a blog post about them looking to this year and then they even said this this was even further out so can bear, the, yeah. bear that in mind they did have this image can that the, you can see here right here they didn't. They didn't Cantha. have any hints to Cantha. They didn't name. You know that. You know that meme with the two birds. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but with this, it definitely looks like it. I even think some of the images originally were named Shingji, which was the monastery in Cantha. So it really seems like we're going to Cantha. Where else would we go for another expansion? Well, I mean, the whole map, sure. I'm I'm curious of why we're gonna end up going there because originally we went um to um, what's it face following Balthazar um in his quest for you know power in Path of Fire so like I'm curious what 
the thing that's going to draw us into that area is something like, something Jormag. Maybe, but like Jormag's not in Cantha, so why uh, would he go there? I was just assuming that fallout of dealing with him would send us off that direction. Right. But like, I feel oh. like there's going to be something specific we're going to go there for. Like, Bubbles. Bubbles? Hmm? Bubbles is the reason we can't Steve. get to Cantha right now. Oh, right. I forgot. Maybe Steve moves moves around and we follow him. We're like, go get him. Maybe he's an ally. He comes up and says, like, hey, friends, want to go to Cantha? <laughs> is he wearing mickey mouse ears too <laughs> yeah hey, have you yep. seen lion's arch that's a fair point um i'm looking forward to it but like there are people who think it's gonna drop at the end of this year oh no, no. I, I really feel like there's no way possible the way they talk the, about it the, the absolute earliest is q4 2021 absolutely earliest i'm gonna guess q3 like fall 2022 is a more realistic mm -hmm. yeah because when they released path of fire that was a lot sooner than expected um but it it was it was a expansion that had a lot but not a lot going on if you know what i mean because there was, there was like, it was aesthetically pleasing. There was a lot of things, but it was like, it kind of felt empty after a while. Well, that was because they went back, they, that, that was the rubber banding back to the old map design of there's stuff happening, go find it. And then all right. of the maps, because mounts were stretched way wide. So, like, I, I, I've never really heard it described that way. But yeah, that's, that's a pretty good way to describe Path of Fire at release. Yeah, so I think they should take their time to figure out how they want to do these maps uh, and how they want to do events, how they want to do map-wide events, like if they want to introduce a new type of thing uh, to make things interesting, to keep people coming back. Yeah, um, I think the main thing would be have a good mix of like things instead yes. of like going all for one kind of goal, which like I can understand like the draw of like pushing map events or the draw of really focusing on exploring because you can put all of your time and energy in that and do those things really well. But the problem is, is the people who aren't interested in that kind of thing will always feel kind of left out. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, you know, I still say, you know, people are like, we should have all map metas. Like that's why hot earth, heart of thorns is better. It's like, People hated Hearththrones when it launched. Yep. Because you couldn't do anything on the map unless great. it was every two hours. Yep. And so I was it's hard like, for me, so it was great for me. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. I was also one of those people who loved it. But yeah, I remember very clearly I, all I, the people who were mad about it. I didn't mind it, but when then when you're like trying to just be like, well, I just want to hop on like an alt character and map mm -hmm. complete the area and then it's like well no you gotta wait to get into this area every four hours when the f moon is full and these <laughs> conditions are mad it's I, like f f i think that's without okay i'll admit that was annoying especially i think in. krista is still missing a couple ranger pets specifically because she needs like tangled depths progress to a certain mm -hmm. point in a certain yeah. lane which for any meta events that happened after that what like the only one i can think of is dragonfall you can't get around Kralkatoric at the moment. Like, if, if the fight has not pushed mm -hmm. up to Kralkatoric, Dragon Fall. Oh, no, Dragon Stand. Oh, okay. I thought you were... Cause we he were switched on expansions on okay. us. I did the same thing. Yeah. I was yeah, like, I was wait, like... oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, it's, it, the Dragon Stand is, is similar, but it doesn't just... Uh, you just can't get there. It doesn't outright kill right. you. Dragon Fall kills you if you walk up to Kralkatoric. When you had Dragon Fall, Dragon Stand, well, in this expansion where you deal with the dragons, like Dragon Stumble, like... Dragon roll over. Oh, dragon rise. Dragon rise. There you go. Wasn't that supposed to be Ooh. our guild name? Rise of wasn't the that, dragon. Wasn't that one no, of the dragons guild? watch? Oh, okay. But I'm sorry, chat. <laughs> we, we just went like you wanted weekend. us back. It's your fault. Yeah. Um, but I see my, my thing is 
and at, at, at this current time, that's going to be the caveat here for, cause I know I'll probably anger people is for me. Cantha isn't a draw. I feel like it's oh, cashing dang. in on a meme slash nostalgia. Like in case yeah. of emergency break glass. And I feel like after the previous, <laughs> after the previous years, uh, like the previous year of how people were like, this is a dead game, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the, you know, we tried yeah. to draw it's just a little Jade figurine in the glass, in the glass case. <laughs> but because at, at this point, I, I I'm kind of like on the side of like what uh, Robin was saying earlier was how are we getting there? Like right now we're in the, in the shiver peaks, like, actually progressing the opposite direction right like, right are we gonna go so yeah. far north that we end up coming, like <laughs> go all the way around yeah. it's a globe guys exactly um but and, and i'm kind of worried because with all the backlash of like oh the you know the saga it's not gonna be an expansion like thing and people made that decision after maybe one episode this also came out around the same time that people realized Mike Z was no longer working there slash also mm -hmm. not, you know, lead, you know, uh, was it lead game dev was the title? I'm yeah. So we like have, that. you also have to think about it this way. There is a percentage of people like us who, uh, I think I've said this before, but the, there's like a percentage of us who actually like stay in tune with all the news that happens. And then there's a bunch of people who just don't care. And then they just play the game. Right. Yeah. So like we're kind of in the minority when it comes to that. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will go like, oh, I like this game. Oh, they have an expansion. Oh, I'll buy it. Versus us will be like, oh, but you know, X, Y, and Z left, or they're doing this differently. Do, do I really want to get the expansion at this time? Do I want to wait? You know, that type of thing. So right. I guess we have more of an informed opinion about it. Oh yeah, definitely. I Personally, I don't have too much of a problem with the idea of where the game is going. Because mm -hmm. honestly, the Ice Brute Saga has been fantastic. Yep. I've enjoyed the maps. I've enjoyed the mastery design. I've enjoyed the dialogue. Like, literally everything going on with Ice Brute Saga is fantastic for me. Like, I just like everything that's going on. I know there are people who complained about the, the strike mission and Steel and Fire. But to be honest, I kind of like the idea of doing more than just fight a boss for a strike mission. Yeah. So, escort mission. Yeah, I know. I get the complaint that you can't make it shorter because the just fight a boss strike missions, if you get better with the DPS, you shorten the strike mission. You get to your rewards faster. It rewards you for playing better. Great. Mm -hmm. But variety is also good. And the idea of having like the PV horde thing, if that goes well, like. It'll be cool to see that. I'm sure there are going to be people making the same complaint because you probably still can't shorten it by DPSing harder. Oh, well. I'm also liking that we don't necessarily get a new map every update kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah. Because that was one thing that always bothered me was that eventually, well, even we had kind of gotten past the point of where a map every update was a good thing. Because, like, it, initially it was good because it was like, hey, expanding the world. But, like, after a certain amount, you know, it make, becomes difficult for anybody coming behind to do things because nobody's in that map anymore. Yeah. So, like, expanding out the map with a new update is good. Um, it's, reusing old maps is good. It's not so bad since they did the daily Season 3, Season 4. Mm -hmm. rotation. Yeah, that helps. Because I often find, like, even in the middle of the day when I'm working, because work from home and everything, I'll hop onto Guild Wars 2 and do, like, my dailies and stuff. And there's, like, three or four tags on a given map for a daily, and I, it does not take me long at all to get stuff done. That's awesome. So, like, the only time, the, the times when it takes me a while is, like, Lake Doric, where you have to, like, one of the regular dailies is you have to kill all four of the Bloodstone Cannons. Oh, so it's more like waiting around for events to spawn rather than right. waiting to deal thing to, to have people to deal with it. Now, so, I guess my question is, I know a lot of people were gravitating towards when they announced the expansion. It's like they instantly went to what mounts are they going to do? Which I'm like, do we think we're going to, they're going to do mounts? Because I mean, you could look at it as they, they've done different transportations. It's like, do you think they're going to do a different transportation or, like, can you even fat like for me? I can't even fathom what they're gonna be doing for the next 
like to entice people to get an expansion besides right. saying it's Cantha. Well, the, the way that they in the past have thought about it was the big feature for an expansion would be something that would change the way you traverse and get around in the game. So it would be something different than mounts if we they kept that pattern going. Yeah, yeah. the chat's saying personal boat, but isn't that what a skimmer is? I, I would think that it would do something slightly different. Like it would be more a platform to launch from. It would be slow. Like it would it would be more like a utility thing. Like you would have oh, the, oh, got, people on the boat. Like yeah, yeah. it so, wouldn't be like a one person thing. It'd be like and, and, and a, we're 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 doing we're not just doing personal housing. We're doing personal boat housing. Yeah, like everybody by the personal river around here. Boat. Like, I mean, yeah, everybody's getting a honestly, houseboat. <laughs> well, I think whatever they do, they'll come up with a creative and unique way to do it. Because, like, personally, I never would have expected the way that they implemented mat mounts to be done in the first place. Like, it still blows my mind how the mounts have been implemented and all the things that just them and the way each one works has changed the game. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what they would do from here, but like, I think it'll just be, be as surprising and interesting as the whole mounts thing was and gliding admit, even. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I will admit even, uh, I've finally got my sky scale and I use it a lot, but I still use all of my other mounts. Like I will use the springer instead of the sky scale frequently. Because the Springer will get me up a cliff faster than the Skyscale will. And, uh, like, I actually rarely use the Raptor, of all things. I frequently, if I'm... Same if, here. If I'm going from point A to point B, and I, it's not a straight, flat line, because at that point it's Roller Beetle, uh, I usually use the Jackal, because especially if I'm going through, like, a whole bunch of enemies that I don't want to deal with, the Jackal yep. has more blinks, which give you dodges. I also like the jackal in case, like, I fall off a cliff or something because I can blink my way down and, and you be can okay. Cancel fall damage, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Like, uh, maybe they go full on like kung fu movie, and we get like wire fighting looking kind of. Oh, so we can fights. run along the treetops. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know. Like it depends on how how far they go with you know embracing yeah. ridiculousness with the setting. Yeah, like for me, it, it's not. I hope people don't think I don't have any confidence in what they could do because, like Robin said, every time they did something, I think they did an excellent job on it. They ch like really changed the game on it, like for mounts specifically. It, you know, I just for me, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know what they could do next that wouldn't, especially if it if it's gonna follow the same format as a different way to uh, traverse something, but. I'm still worried about what they're going to do with uh, elite specs, which is which is 100 percent why I'm like absolute earliest is 2021 is is end of 2021 because people want like elite specs right now and I'm like the game's not ready for it, <laughs> the game's just not. It, yeah. There's no room for it right now. <laughs> like that, it wasn't all that long ago that they literally just were disabling parts of Mesmer in PvP for balancing issues. So I honestly don't know the state of balance right now, but it, yeah, I'd, I have well, no idea. It is, it is far better now since they did the power coefficient sweep. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, after that, I did play a bit. Yeah, uh, like it's was... better now because time to kill is longer. So it gives, I mean, they can figure out what the hell's going on more. Because it's right, like, you have a chance yeah. to do something. Yeah, but the um, I just don't think the game is quite ready for it yet. Because I remember during like the tail end of Heart of Thorns, I actually felt like both core builds and elite spec builds for every class had a place, mm, except for yeah. like Revenant, because Revenant had problems back then. <laughs> and Revenant, I think, has seen the largest number of wholesale reworks to its kits. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, originally when Revenant came out, if you weren't really running Glint as one of your um, 
things. It was kind of like, what are you doing? Yeah, it was very that, much designed with everything in mind, which mm-hmm. doesn't really yeah. work out too well. For- yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's that's my big worry is, you know, you're dropping another nine classes on the game. So uh, yeah. that's that's why I'm kind of looking for a little more cook time. Also, I'm hoping that their thematics are a bit stronger. Because, like, I remember when Dragon Hunter was released for Heart of Thorn, like, they did the teaser video for Dragon Hunter, and everybody was just like, Right. What? 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 <laughs> like, what What caused Although, this? Although, like, that said, that, that thematically within the game, it didn't make sense. It made sense for what weapon they gave Guardians, because it covered uh, something they were missing, definitely. Right. Which, I mean, I think that's more a writing issue than necessarily a design yeah. issue. And and honestly, I looked at it and I'm like, you're fighting a bunch of Gorim dinosaurs and everything with the kit thematically ties in with fighting things way bigger than you. Well, I think that's um, one of the problems with uh, just gathering points that you can spend on lo- unlocking traits is you lose a lot of that. Like if they could have a quest line or something that where you go in and experience like why this this profession that you are is branching out into this other area and how it works and like all of that, Class it would part. make it. Yeah, it would make it a much more complete experience. Yeah, if they definitely expand on that, because they did start to touch upon that with PLS. It was like, oh, this is why we started developing this elite spec. And it's like, oh, cool. Like, Well, then there's there are NPCs that you can talk to in um, Crystal Oasis. Mm -hmm. There are like like there's there's a hollow smith in some fields outside of Amnoon. And you can literally talk to them and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a holosmith. Yeah, I remember the Mesmer one that's like up like northeastern spot or something. But Yeah, near the, the Temple of Korna. But, uh, right. yeah. it, would, it would take, for the way I envision it, it would take kind of like a redesign of the game. Because like, ideally I would like us to have like quest steps that you go through to learn the things and like experience them more completely. And then like at the end of each step, you unlock one of the things for the um, elite spec. But like that would be a completely different way of unlocking a trait line than we've ever had before. Well, so. I, actually, I was thinking of it what, like what if you could still unlock it? Because for the people that don't want that, you know, it's like I, I just right. want my, you know, min maxing. And but if you want a story aspect to it, what if they attach that to the base version of the specialty weapon that they usually give you? Oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Like every and time that was you like the collection, complete, to get the, yeah. right? Like each step that you do and learning about what it is unlocks a part of the specialty weapon. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be a. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, H. No, that's not like that. That's that's a good idea. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I, it'd be interesting to see where it goes. Hopefully, we maybe start to get shreds of more information. Maybe even confirming where we're going, which. Like you said, <laughs> heavily looks like Antha. But I will say I am looking forward to seeing like armor and weapon designs from Cantha. Right. So I'm looking forward to Luxon versus Kurzak stuff. Hmm? For those who don't know, those were factions that were against each other. You mean the factions from factions? Yes. No, from Cantha. Both you're both correct. Um, but yeah, I don't know how they're going to do it here because, um, I'm wondering if that's how, what's going to turn into the world v world stuff when they, it's well, cause like there was like a PVP mode for it. And then there was a quest that you could do that you could gain favor for one or the other. Um, so I, I don't know how they would do it this time because you could you could add a PvP mode, but like uh, of course not everyone plays PvP. So I was wondering what the PVE variety would be because naturally people would want both, and you could technically do both. Back and Guild Wars one, but eh, I'm just curious how they're going to do that or if they're going to be enemies at all. Yeah, well, I mean. Like I said, we'll see. There's really no information, just pure speculation. Yep. 
Um, Something we do very well here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts on the uh, expansion announcement that's so far off? I will wait. I won't even say expecting things. I will just wait. Oh yeah, they were defeated because now the the minister, uh, the new emperor, was it or something about the Ministry of Purity? Yeah, because oh, yeah, the Ministry of Purity came in and now like the yeah we were actually the ones to help Ministry. We're getting down a rabbit hole that I thought we weren't allowed to get around. Yeah. like you guys. Yeah, we're true. not because because Arlie Ar- Arlie's on a time limit. We need to we need to keep this. But that's also what drove the tag focused. out. But. I mean, along that lines, they also sent the white mantle were done too. I mean, mm. so I, and we might restart it. I mean, that's kind of what we did in Guild Wars one. Where you were, that's the last thing I'll say, this, you know, we kind of restarted the shining blade. I mean, it's kind of, it could be a small faction. Like, I mean, Hey faction. Anyway, uh, any final thoughts on the expansion stuff? Sorry, I was trying to say it's one of those things that just because you don't see a group active in the world doesn't mean they aren't doing things behind the scenes. So, like the Illuminati. No, I call the order whispers in this. Uh, but some quick updates from some stuff that uh, has taken place. Uh, they had an update about the build templates and legendary equipment, which for people that don't know, because I know this, I think, was even talked about after uh, we had our last episode, was really quickly they were going to make legendary equipment. Uh, or a, There's basically like an armory system originally that you could put into there so you could easily transfer between your characters. Uh, would be based on the templates and require the legendary arm legendary equipment legendary armor Mm -hmm. rings and all that stuff uh they just kind of gave a quick update of saying first thanks to all of you for your input your strong reaction and feedback showed us that this would be a worthwhile addition to the game and they can't and and they can't wait to get get it to us Uh, they are excited to be able to make a part of the development early on early on for this feature and in the coming months they'll be sharing uh updates as they move clo- uh, through the implementation process. So it still sounds like this feature, this concept is months away. Uh, I mean, are you yeah, at I'm, best? Yeah. If, if there's no hiccups, I honestly, I had forgotten until they posted the update that that feature was not in the game yet. Like in my brain, I was like, Oh yeah, that's a good thing. That's in now. <laughs> I, I'm just, happy that they wanted to do it in the first place. I know there are going to be a lot of people who are a little touchy about the fact that um, like people who made multiple sets of legendary armor, for example. Right. Because they effectively wasted their money doing that, and it makes me wonder if they're going to do anything about that. Um, Right. Because That's a valid concern, too, because I kind of feel like the legendary armory idea should have been something that was originally with legendary armor template and all of that. Like that should have been part of the thing because I don't, it, I don't know how you have those conversations without realizing that this is going to be a problem. You know, I will admit I am happy. I decided to get the Ascension because now I have a legendary back piece and back pieces are Ah. some of the hardest things to set up for stats. Yeah. 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 Um, and I have a legendary warhorn. I don't know how many characters I have that'll use a warhorn, but I've got that now. I still have the last step of making the howler. Like all I have to do is collect the rest of the legendary shit, and I will make it. Just go just from precursor to to legendary. Yeah. yeah. I have two legendary. I have two precursors sitting in my bank. So. Wow. I don't feel so bad. Shush you. <laughs> you're you're entire you're gonna this this update's gonna roll out and it's just gonna be like I'm done. <laughs> oh, I'm not done. It's enough to make all the weapons. I was just gonna say I, I, I know a way to make everybody feel bad. Hey age, how are you how many legendaries you got? He's not counting, counting that's armor, what, just weapons. I'll say, that's how long he, he's counting. That's why he's taking so long. I, I gotta go to my Twitter and see because oh, I <laughs> 
He has to go back to when he tweeted about it. I was going to say, anytime you have to reference Twitter, you're, you're in a problem. I just, I don't know. Like, I, I think this is a solid way to update things. I wonder if this is going to be the same way for, um, oh, yeah, Mafongo's talking about the legendary runes and sigils. See, I always right. thought, that, you mean there's, there wasn't a reason to craft those previously? Oh, I've not crafted those. I thought they were a scam. <laughs> why? I was just it's the too way expensive. they yeah, the okay. way they were set up, it was really, really expensive to do it. And like using it on mm -hmm. multiple characters was a huge problem. So Okay. That's fair. I've never like even looked into it just because I, I feel like I'd want to go and get legendary armor first before i even or, or at least legendary weapons before i even got legendary sigils oh, come on get like right. legendary runes and sigils and put them on like green gear <laughs> just, that would be just, amazing just for the meme I value awesome uh -huh. just just for the meme value Ugh. apparently the last few gem store back pieces were dieable oh, i didn't even see people talking about them surprised that uh the capes i think Mm. Well, yeah, the cape, the guild cape that came out was Diable. Well, I don't that, know about the other the ones. Guild cape. Well, uh, okay, actually, there was two guild capes. So, right. But not just the capes. Oh, other stuff too. Cool. I'll admit, I often don't even look at the gem store back items. I I don't. I very rarely care because it's so many of them just don't fit with what I'm doing on a character that it's just yeah. not worth the time. But uh, actually, well, another update that uh, popped up, I think, this past week was about basically what's going to happen between uh, PvP seasons. And they are looking at a 3v3 mini season. Uh, they said they wanted to try some different things as they looked for the right balance of conquest season to mini season to true off season. Uh some general the general feedback that they got was with 2v2 season is that it ran a too long uh so they are basically having a week which is the week that we're in right now uh with no active season then followed by a two-week mini season which will fall on i think the release of uh during uh, was it no quarter the living story so i think it's going to go out on tuesday as well and they said that they 22 Oh. I've made I've made twenty two weapons. Sorry, Jesus. And they wanted to see how the uh, two week seasons feel, and we'll continue to evaluate mini season length uh, moving forward. So, I mean, it's, it's an interesting idea to because honestly, I think giving a week of nothing going on for ranked is actually a really good idea for the devs. Because then they actually have a little bit of time to look at the, the data that came in and maybe hand that off to balance team. Yeah, definitely. Harley, I, sorry. Oh. I feel like having a real off season is good for the players too. Like as much as people are always like, I want to do go, go, go all the time. Like having a break occasionally, like as long as it's not too long, but like a little bit of a break to catch your breath and try different things or whatever without like penalties of it being part of a season is good for people. Yeah. Cause doesn't yeah. PVP still give you like little badges and crowns and stuff that you can, you gotta have time to go sit in AFK in the major town to gloat. Don't that, that's don't. the tournament stay. Yeah. But no. <laughs> oh. yeah, I, I think a quarter of the time should be like time off anyway. So, right. I think that's a good, it's a good ratio. Speaking of, I probably won't be participating in the three V threes because it's death match again. And, the game is designed around 5v5. Like, anything less than 5v5 deathmatch is not going to go well. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a lot of people I, discussing uh, that it's like, oh, you're just going to see, like, these two, and then, like, that are, are like, awesome together. Well, and apparently, then... uh, Scourge Firebrand was, was a popular it. combo during 2v2, and people are just going to be like, oh, so it's now going to be Scourge Firebrand Scourge. <laughs> so uh, the, to me there's no real point in playing those modes for me as a thief player because it's just like I'm going to get bodied no matter what so 
Yeah, because you can't like the way the thing is designed. You can't single out someone and spike them. Can't run yeah. hide. Like you, hide. you can't skirmish. You can't. You can't do what the class is designed to do. Yeah, so. this is why I want like at least one v one potential, but they're uh, Chad, never going to give it to me this way. Chad is saying core necro and rev were pretty popular. Now that they will add pocket heal brands. Oh boy. Oh basically, yeah. And, yeah. Oh, basically, anything anything that can fight one v one or can uh can like survive in a brawl will be a uh, good. And if you add a healer as a third option, that's actually pretty solid. And especially anything that can do that while also putting out Condi damage, because Condi damage is oppressive, and you only have so many responses to Condi damage before you're out of cleanses. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so quick little update on that. And it sounds like they're listening on both subjects. So definitely, you know, voice your concerns, especially once the 3v3 thing starts. I mean, it's only going to be a two week thing, but. You know, voice your concerns, and hopefully they'll readjust things or relook at things and crunch the numbers. But any other thoughts on the uh, two updates we got? Mm-mm. Um, an- another thing while we were gone, uh, and we kind of hit upon it a little bit earlier, was we finally got capes in the game. Capes. So m- people were asking for this since day one, and you know. Char were ruining it for everyone. But uh yeah, they finally added capes. Um there is like a basic like guild cape that you could get from I think one of the guild vendors for tokens and whatnot. Um there was a more fancy one from the gem store. A lot of them seem to be in the gem store. So you know, surprise prize. Um but yeah, you can see as some of them cycle through here. Um I wanna say um they, I think they gave away a fr- like a different free one. I think it was Rorik's one for the Guild Wars one, uh, like cele- like birthday celebration thing. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and like Chad says, yeah, uh, we got a decent free one, you know, right uh, with the Rorik one. I yeah, the Guild Cape one was kind of standard. I wasn't surprised when it was introduced. It looked very similar one. to the Guild Wars One Guild Cape. Mm. Yeah, pretty, pretty basic. basic. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of like how they did it, where like they didn't tell us ahead of time. It was just like, "Hey, capes, here you go." Like, yeah. Oh yeah, and the, that was like, cool. Along with there is an earnable one in game, like not just like getting tokens and buying it from a vendor. Is was it last? episode that the meta achievement was the or one of the meta achievements was a runic cape i believe so so uh you know you can get you know there and it it is a pretty nice looking one i mean it's Mm -hmm. not it's not as bad as like some people are saying how the the standard guild cape is kind of playing i like the animations they did with them too like yep. the flow of it and how it moves around that's nice you have to collect 100 misty cape scraps yes. from uh strike missions daily strike achievements weekly emissary chests in the so eye of the north basically you're taking scraps and stitching them together to make your clip that's awesome yeah wouldn't it wouldn't it be great if it looked like all patchy that would be amazing well it's it's misty so it's from the mist so once you put it all together it fixes itself. It, was, okay. it, it should be patchy until you wear it and then dunk yourself in the Mystic Forge. and then. It... <laughs> oh, so it's a meta off of a meta. You have to complete one of the Steel Warband weapons first. Okay, oh, I okay. thought it was something to do with the weapon things, but uh, yeah. There was a lot of stuff that came in with Steel and Fire. I was pretty pleased with that, too. That is true. Like chat's saying, you can customize the guild cape with a guild emblem as long as you control right. what guild or you can always make your own and switch it out um but yeah i i, I don't think there was that many people people that were angry that they brought capes in right like i i had never personally wanted capes so i didn't care that much but they did a good job and yay and for i know a lot of people have been asking for for a long time long uh, longer I mean... than that than that bear shaman outfit <laughs> Yeah. Uh I mean 
2015 age would probably be happy, but now it's just like it's kind of late for me. It's like I'm kind of I've you're over the gates. Well, it's like I've moved on because it's like oh, it's not gonna happen. So it's like right. Yeah, but just when you thought like, just when your heart gave up on, they're like, "Ah." I would say that I, I. I have yet to find one that actually fits with any character that I run. Yep. And I would say they need to put out a lot more before I can say that, yay, capes. It's just right. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably get murdered well, for it because I run my Revenant that kind of has this dragon looking motif going on. Mm-hmm. And the sentence that will probably get me killed by the fan base is I, I like the idea of the capes, but I like my dragon wings I, I i prefer my wings because he's a my character's a dragon yeah that's what i was gonna I'm, say like the back pieces back piece gliders that i have on my characters they all have those for specific reasons like my ranger has rox's uh quiver because like she uses bows a lot and she's a ranger so it works with her and, like all of my characters are like that it's one of the reasons why i wasn't really pushing for capes because I thought I had found good other ways of having things on the back that worked for my characters. But also a, a very intelligent outfit designer once said no capes. <laughs> she was wrong. She was right. Wrong. She was very right. <laughs> is that is is that how we're gonna like our characters are gonna die at the end of whenever Guild Wars 2 ends? Is like <laughs> Capes gonna get stuck. Yeah. But, um, and like chat saying, it does help the, uh, you know, co- like the kind of in-game cosplayer things of like, you can do like Superman, Batman, any, any numerous ones that have an iteration where they use a cape. So yeah, it's not bad. Maybe we'll get some cloaks. I would like cloak. Oh, uh, so, so you, you can just kind of, you're over cape, but you're on board for cloak. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just have to play a light ar- uh, medium armor class and you combine the um the shrouded hood with a cape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like cloaks. Okay. Lord of the, Lord of the Rings. I don't think there's going to be one that stealths you by itself. <laughs> well, I'm not, not that one in particular, but, you know, I like or Zachary Ox brings up the headpiece or shoulder piece. What about, you know, some of those old headpieces that were headpiece and shoulder piece skins? Yeah. Like the combo set. And yes, the, yeah, I'd rather see cloaks than trench coats, Mafongo. I agree. But trench coats are so cool. Shush you. If you're in we the have Matrix. Trench coats just never get old. No, no, we, we, they got old. Oh, God. I just remember when the, the legendary armor came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure they laugh when they made that. They're like, "Oh, so we're not doing a trench card." They're like, "Just wait, just wait." Shh, shh, shh. That's uh, exactly what we want them to think. Um, but yeah, you know, getting capes finally in yours too. For some, it's probably like sweet music to their ears. I threw up a little. Speaking of sweet Aww, music for your ears, you did. <laughs> we're back guys for your ears uh the, they put out a blog post talking about the music of the ice brood saga they have it currently streaming uh, uh consistently on the guild wars 2 twitch channel till no quarter releases on may 26th and it is also available on arena soundcloud so definitely if you enjoy the music and you maybe can't be in game during it and you know, you're maybe you're doing work or something, and you can just start playing some music. So there you go. That's what I did yesterday. Oh, see, but yeah. So, and you know, I think we've always said this every single time uh, that there's been so you know the music has been so great and on point, and um, I actually have I don't remember the name of. The one theme where you're in, um, what's it called? Georgia Marches, where there's like this cool Witcher like music. I need to find the name of that one. I just, I hate the 
whoever decided to, the, like the plucking sequence whenever the bone skinner shows up and just yeah it's done so well and it just it, yes it's too the sound is this the, the music direction in this game is fantastic so i do they have a spotify account I don't do they know have an account on spot Oh, okay. They do? Okay. I don't know that they have a Spotify account, but like the music is on Spotify. Okay. Because I, I definitely need to set up like a like an ambient soundtrack music thing for when I'm at work. And th- a lot of this is going to go on it. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so definitely check that out. Man. Uh, for people that don't remember, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, our link, uh, links will be in the description if you want to check any of this out. But uh, also, last up, uh, something that we, you know, that came out while we were gone, uh, which I I didn't even, wasn't even aware about until I looked back at some stuff, and I was like, oh, I, I like some of these, is the new guild emblems uh, that a lot of the uh, uh, art artists create, uh, creator artists for Guild Wars 2. Um, made some and you can see with their names as well and uh you know as they're cycling through i'm curious if there's any ones that you guys kind of gravitate towards or like at all angelique makes always good ones i like that yeah uh there are a couple that are like commander tag icons and i think those are pretty solid yeah especially for like like hardcore w dub guilds Mm-hmm. And there is also Chauncey, which I mean, how can you not? He's so fancy. Hmm. Yeah, I like, I like I like the variety of all of them. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. What was that age? Does he have a monocle in the top? Yes. Edge? Yeah, it's coming up here near the end. Like it is pretty much literally Chauncey. Yeah, yeah it's the next to last set, so it should be. I kind of like the shortly. Green like the green face mask that uh, Vasberg did. I think it it looks pretty much like a Mesmer. The Mesmer, I forget what that's called, but the Mesmer Yeah, mask. one of the Mesmer masks. All the pumpkin heads, oh, I missed light. that one. D- D- Deo, I think, would have been all over the, the Mad King ones, personally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I like Whoa. the Galaxy one that I think uh, Sarian, Sarian made. And... Yeah, the Galaxy one is pretty sweet. Yeah, there's well, a lot of I think there's a lot of good weird. ones this iter- you know this iteration that uh, like you guys said a lot of variety too like you got some world world ones if you have a crafting guild you kind of kind of do the uh uh ribbon looking one the textile ribbon mm-hmm. roll uh the gears I mean well it's, that was always kind of my complaint with what we had before was that like yeah there were a lot of options but they were all kind of the sameish you know it yeah. wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of variety, so I'm really excited for these. I like the ones that have like color variation, but it fades nice. I like I like the ones that have like color variation, but it also adds depth to the color variation. So if you choose mm-hmm. a yellow, there's like two other shades of yellow that it'll go to as well. Yeah. Yeah. I um <laughs> I love the Catmander one just because I remember how people lost their minds when they added the Catmander tags and I was like I want to just run around with that to make people be like ah why were people so mad about that cuz it I was don't... silly and this is a serious game Oh yes This is a very serious game clearly as Super Adventure Box just wrapped a week ago <laughs> something well, I mean, we're Which, going to the 251st episode. I, I feel like it should be somewhat serious. <laughs> thank, thank, thank the dark gods that Super Adventure Box wrapped because the number of instances that were being opened was taxing the servers and lag was terrible. Yeah. A few years ago, there was a post where somebody railed against like the cat ears, the bunny ears, the stuffed animal backpacks, and I don't know, something else. I forgot. And I was just like, yep. Don't ever see my characters. <laughs> I, I'm honestly shocked that they they would be surprised that that wouldn't exist because this is this is marketed in 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 Asia where like right. the cute stuff is like mm-hmm. people do that stuff. And... Wait, the cat ears cost more than bunny ears? I had no idea. 
it's it's the meta she didn't even look she just bought them she was like no seriously like bunny ears came out i got them cat ears came out, i got them i have literally no idea how much they cost i didn't she, care <laughs> she just wishes she could combine them with the glasses <laughs> yes if i could have reading glasses and the cat ears that would be great but yeah a lot of these icons are really good mm -hmm. yeah i thought they were very good in its variety of them all. Perhaps, perhaps we'll uh, we'll work on the uh, the guild emblem since it's technically a white mantle emblem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good oh, job. It's always hurt me a little bit. I'm not we we changed that before everything happened. By the way, say, who picked that anyway? Uh, I believe Krista was looking through the stuff oh, and look, she decided. Look how he threw his wife under the bus. <laughs> well, it wasn't me. I, I just I don't I don't do jack shit with artistic anything. I would I wouldn't have done a good job at all with any like we were just because we didn't know. Like I didn't know. It was, I right, thought it was one right. of the cooler guild emblems when we were looking. Yeah, when you did was, that, I think it was. I think at the time, me and Royby, who are kind of like the lore nuts, were like, "Well, that's that's white mantle," but yeah, you know, they were also. I think that was pre Lions Arch rebuild too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's been a while since we swapped that. So maybe it's time, oh, then, especially with some of these new ones. Yeah, maybe. And for people that are wondering, those are totally free as long as I mean, as long as you own the game. Uh, it's just part <laughs> of the game. Yeah. Like they're not going to be a gem store thing or anything like that. But uh, I mean, that's kind of all the topics we had. But I do want to throw it out there. We just as we were thinking about things, we were. Uh, cause I, we'd love to hear your opinions on it, but we were going to kind of basically forgo the gem store stuff just because it, I, I, f what? I have one gem store thing real quick. Oh, okay. I want to interject because well, I noticed it well, today. This be a good example is, um, we're going to probably mostly forgo the gem store stuff and still, unless we see something that's like, Oh, really cool. Or that, you know, like Mount gate that breaks through into just regular news. But uh, I guess take it away, Robin. <laughs> Making me a liar no. already. Day, day one of being back. But no, I noticed this morning when I was playing, I wanted to do a PSA that the Gecko Springer skin is back in the store. So get it if you want it. Like, because it was gone for a bit. It mm. licks its eyeball. <laughs> Why did I know that that is exactly what you were going to bring up? <laughs> It's so cool. Dear Lord. Well, um, I actually have a skin. But uh, any... I other... just... Oh, go ahead. And that and a lot of stuff is still free, I think. I don't know if it ended uh -huh. earlier today. They're, they have a lot of stuff that was up for free on uh, the gem store. The, the icon, the little gift icon is not bugged like it was previously. Just check it yeah when i logged in like two hours ago i got a heroic booster for free and which those are giftable i remember that shaman tweeting that yeah out. so if you there do was have something other accounts, else i now forgot you do have other accounts but they do have like it, the free base option you cannot buy those so you can't don't just try to make free accounts it has to be a bot copy of actual the game has access account. to it right so. If you do have old accounts that are cashing in on dailies and, you know, whatever everybody does with all those, uh, you can always gift to your main account. Yeah, I got a heroic booster and something else because I didn't log in yesterday, I guess. But I, I don't remember what the something else was. I have enough celebration, like birthday boosters, <laughs> to yeah. have stuff running for years at this point. Yeah. So... At least I have that on top of literally every other booster that's... I still have some of, like, the old regen boosters. Yeah. Well, also, bank. I am I am so terrible about doing the things that I need to do to get mastery points that I honestly don't want to earn experience any faster because then I end up with all of the lines full and I can't Just do anything. Yeah. yeah. At least, at, uh, speaking of that, um, with Icebrood Saga, if you have a mastery line maxed, it will actually start overflowing that XP to another unfinished mastery. Yeah. So, at going That's into something. you know a new release with new masteries coming up, at least you know that if you max something, you're not worried about it. Right. Though, I'm definitely going to run into that wall the second that the next thing releases. Oh well. Yep. But yeah, I think 
other thoughts on anything we talked about? Or I'm good for the day. Glad to be back. Indeed, indeed. And do stick around. We do a bit of an after show, so just hang out. Uh, but yeah, Jim, where can they find you? I can be found on Twitter at Malthanus MMO. You can also find me here on twitch.tv slash Mad Realms. That's two A's in the Mad every Wednesday at 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern ish time. And that doesn't uh, mean it's only for an hour. It could start either 7 or 8. No, no it's between 7 or 8 that I start okay. and then it's... and then I play for a period of time. Uh, things have gotten a lot looser on Wednesday nights, considering I've expanded my look at games. Played Crucible last week. Not sure if I'm going to keep playing it as much as I enjoy it. I just, at the very least, you get to look at the characters because it's third person. But um, might get back into doing some more WW stuff because that was fun. And then Deo joins me for WW nights, and we get constantly just run into the ground because oh okay i didn't think you were gonna say that i thought you were gonna say we were gonna get constantly drunk because of that's the rule for <laughs> i i mean yeah we do kind of tend to drink uh, when we dub v dub um allegedly and always responsibly did i cover ourselves well we are responsible because we're not driving so well i'm not because i don't have a mountain worldly world but you sir <laughs> yeah but i look the cat does uh, most of the driving but anyway hope to see you all wednesday so awesome. And Age, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch for YouTube at Age I, I I played Crucible for like I want to say six hours uh, uh, between yesterday and, yes, and today. So I'll probably play more tonight if anything. Uh, I kind of like it. I don't know where I don't know if I'll continue playing it. Uh, but I've been into like a lot of FPS games lately. So, um, Guild Wars Two, I will probably stream. If anything, it'll probably be World Wars World. But streams are random right now because I'm back in OT. So yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I awesome. try planning things, oh. but they just don't work. Yeah. Anyway, that's yeah. That's all I got. This, this is how we know what state we're in now. We we return. <laughs> I'm the one regularly streaming. Age is intermittent. Right. We know hell has frozen over now. <laughs> but awesome, awesome. Hopefully to see some Crucible and other shooting stuff and all that fun stuff. And Robin, where can they find you? I can be found on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at Arly82. Though Instagram is mostly more of like my life kind of posts and 99% my cat basically. So if you want gaming stuff, stick with uh, Twitter basically. Um, and then I also write for MMORPG, uh, the, the wow column and guild wars two column. So yay. Awesome. And you can find me at simply underscore Deo on Twitch and Twitter. I usually try to, I'm trying to regularly stream on Mondays, Fridays and Sundays. So Leading up to this, I'm going to try to hit Warframe pretty hard to get the weeklies out of the way since Nightwave started. Um, just because so many things are releasing next week. So, holy crap. Um, but, yeah, we'll try to play some of the other games besides that next week. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and then, like Jim said, on Wednesdays, while I don't stream on my channel, I'll be hanging out either talking or actually participating in the uh Wednesday stream so definitely come on by and check it out and chit chat about all the things uh, but yeah that is it for this week uh, oh I guess I gotta do the whole spiel of like if you're <laughs> just tuning in do stick around we do a bit of an after show uh, if you want to watch this in full we do highlight it on twitch which is twitch.tv slash mad realms we also go live with the show if you're watching this on youtube which is youtube slash mad realms two a's in the mad uh, that all but if you want to watch it live, go to our Twitch, and that is 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And I think that's everything. I probably messed it up, but hey, we'll always have 252 to fix it. And we'll see y'all next week and in the game. Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody.